everyone, welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, I want to teach you the one-player game Cristallo, designed by Liberty Kiefer and published by Lightheart Games, who helped sponsor this video. If you've watched my videos before, you know that normally, if there are solo rules, I leave those for you to discover on your own. But not this time, because here, there's only solo rules. In this bag, we have an adventure where six mystical creatures have been captured in a black dragon's lair using powerful crystal magic, a magic you are going to use against him to free the innocent creatures while collecting treasures along the way. So, join me at the table, and let's learn how to play. To set up, place the six creatures that have been captured by the black dragon near the top of the play area, and put three matching colored gems on the orbs that are shown along the bottom of their cards. Also find and set the dragon's two cards face down by the side of the player area, and shuffle these cavern cards into a single face down deck in front of yourself with your key card nearby. Then deal nine caverns into a separate face down pile near the dragon. And that's the setup. In Cristallo, you'll be exploring a dragon's cavern, arranging crystals into patterns that will allow you to break the bonds holding the creatures. Those bonds are represented by these gems that we see on them. If you can remove all of the gems from all six of the creatures, then you get to take on the dragon himself. And most of this will be done using the deck of cards in front of you. So let's go back to the table and I'll show you how this works. To start the game, draw a card from the top of the deck and place it on the table face up in front of you in any orientation. This represents an area of the dragon's cavern and will show some combination of different colored circular orbs and different colored crystals, made up of one, two, or three pieces. For the rest of the game, you'll continue drawing cards one at a time from your deck, expanding your exploration into the dragon's cavern. But for each new section that you add, you must place it so that at least one crystal on the new card is put horizontally or vertically next to another crystal already in the cavern. And you'll have lots of flexibility in how you do this. So let's go back to the table and I'll show you some examples. If I was adding this new card, I could place it here, so these two crystals are adjacent, or like this. But the crystals don't have to match. You can put any two crystals next to each other. But you cannot place a new cavern so that the only connection between it and an older one is a crystal and an orb, or two orbs. At least one crystal must line up with another crystal. But you can even overlap cards. I could place this one here, like this, or like this, or even like this. I could even completely overlap another card because this new one is following the rules of making two crystals adjacent. So you really do have a lot of options here. But I should point out, the new card can only be put beside or on top of other ones. You can, for example, slide a card under one that has already been placed. And once a cavern section has been placed, it can't be moved later. The game continues like this, with you drawing and placing cards, and you're doing this to try to create sets of three crystals and one colored orb that form a square. So let's pretend it's a little later in the game, and I'll show you an example. One type of set is any three crystals that share the same color and shape like we have here, arranged so that along with one orb, they form a square. Here we have three matching crystals and an orb, but not in a square arrangement, so that wouldn't count. Now, as soon as you have created a valid square with a proper set, you look at its orb, and then you find the creature that has that same matching orb on it, and move one of its gems to that space. This orb is now lit up, and you've started to free this creature. And this is just one type of set. There are also four other valid sets you can create as well. For example, you could make one where all the crystals are the same color, but are made up of a different number of pieces. Or you can make one where they're all the same number of pieces, but all different colors. And the final option is all different colors and all different numbers of pieces. Any of these options will free a gem, and your key card will remind you of all those possible combinations. I should also mention, you can use a crystal in more than one set. For example, these three here were used to place this gem. But now I could put a card here, and this would create a whole new set, which also uses these two crystals again, and then lights up this orb. The only restriction is that you may not place a card so that it overlaps an already placed gem, 
or where it would change a set that was already used to gain a gem. For example, I couldn't place this one here because you can see I'm changing this three orange piece crystal to a one purple crystal. And again, this was already necessary to create this gem in the first place. I could, however, turn it around and place it this way because I now have a three piece orange gem overlapping a three piece orange gem. So this set was not changed in any way. You'll keep playing, trying to move gems from the creatures and into the cavern. And once all three gems have been removed from a creature, it's been freed and you can then take it from the line to show that it's left the cavern. Now your objective is to keep drawing and placing cards so that you've freed all of the creatures before you run out of cards in your deck. If you empty the deck, and you haven't freed all of the creatures, the game ends. Now, as you're drawing, occasionally you'll come across treasures, but show a drawing in the center. These work like caverns, but can also provide you with a special bonus. There are three different types, riches, magic, and battle treasures. And as you can see, there are three of each type. You place treasures into your cavern just like any card. But if you can light up both of its orbs, then you are said to unlock that treasure, which will give you a benefit. The more of these that you collect, the higher your final score will be. But if you unlock all three of the riches treasures, that will provide an additional boost to your score. If you light up all three magic treasures, you can remove one gem from any creature, or instead save this power to use on the dragon later, as we'll see. If you collect all of the battle treasures, you gain a bonus when you fight the black dragon later. Speaking of which, let's talk about the dragon. Because if you do succeed in saving all of the creatures, the dragon won't be happy. You're going to have to fight him. So let's go back to the table and I'll show you how that works. Here I am after freeing all of the creatures. And now the dragon wants to fight. So the first thing I do is I remove any treasures that I unlocked. So in this case, I unlocked the helmet. I also unlocked the shield, and down here at the bottom, I also unlocked the sword. Treasures that you unlocked, you'll then place beside yourself. The rest of the cavern cards will gather up and shuffle into a face down pile off to the side. We'll also place all of the gems here as well. Now reveal the black dragon, placing it face up above the play area. You also take the collection of nine cards that were placed beside the dragon during the setup, and you flip them all face up in front of you, along with any other cards that you still had remaining in your original cavern deck. Also, if you unlocked all three battle treasure cards, as I did here, then you draw one additional card from the shuffled cavern deck and add it to the face up ones in front of you. Now you should go through all of these face up cavern cards that you've gathered. The reason you need to do this is to make sure that you have at least one of every type of orb, and you'll find all of them listed here at the bottom of the dragon cards if you need a reminder. If you find any are missing, for example, let's say that I don't have any of this symbol amongst these cards, you'll discard one that you have, and then you'll draw from the cavern deck until you find one showing the orb that you're missing. You'll then place it face up in front of you. You'll keep doing this as necessary until you're sure you have at least one of every type of symbol. Once you're sure you have at least one of every orb, you're ready to fight the dragon. And you'll play cards just as before, except now you can see all of your options as you go. And as soon as you complete a set, you'll then mark the orb with one of the gems from the supply, and then put a matching one onto its related space on the dragon. Your goal is to trap the dragon by filling in all of its orb spaces. Now, keep in mind, you can still unlock treasures here. And if you complete a set of treasures, even if some of them had been unlocked previously, you gain their benefit. For example, if you created a set of three battle treasures during this phase of the game, you could then draw a new card from the deck to add it to your options. Or if you complete all three of the magic treasures, or if you completed it before but didn't use their powers, you can now use them, and this will allow you to add any one gem to the dragon. If you want a reminder of how all the different treasure sets work, you'll find them outlined here on the back of your key card. Defeating the dragon is the goal, but don't be discouraged if you don't succeed on your first try. It can take multiple plays to learn how to use the cards in the most efficient ways to ensure you don't run out of them before the dragon is defeated. With that in mind, there are a few different ways the game can end, and each will provide you with a different title and score, which you'll find outlined in the rulebook. If you ran out of cards before you freed all of the creatures, you take the title of commoner. 
If you freed the creatures but failed to trap the dragon, you're a liberator. If you trapped the dragon but had no cards remaining face up in front of you, you're a vanquisher. If you had one card left over, then you're a knight. Two cards remaining makes you a hero, and if you trapped the dragon and had three or more cards still in front of you, you're a champion. Then you count up all of the treasure you unlocked during your quest. If you have zero to three, you're considered impoverished. Four to six makes you prosperous, and seven to nine means you are wealthy. This is a good time to explain the benefit of unlocking all three of the rich's treasure. This will then add one to the total number of treasures you collected when you're determining your wealth status. Using the title you achieved from your deeds and from the treasures that you collected, you can then find your final score by using the table here in the rulebook. And then you can record how you did in the adventure log. And that's how you play Cristallo. If you have any questions about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below, and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at BoardGameGeek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get a notification anytime we post a new video. But until next time, thanks for watching.